Hi my dear students, welcome back to my class. Hope everyone are fine. So in today's video, I am solving the Zen paper 3 which will definitely help you for your 2022 board examination preparation. See most of the students were asking me, ma'am, do these Zen papers will help us for our 2022 science examination preparation? Of course students, this paper will definitely help you. As you all have already, you know, attended the first and second language examinations few questions were repeated from preparatory and model papers but not all the questions correct so when you try to solve the different question papers as you come to know the variety of questions this will help you to solve the questions which has been asked in the board examination in a very easy way okay so that is the reason whichever the question paper which i am going to solve in my channel especially is definitely going to help you for your board examination preparation because you come across variety of questions which will give you variety of ideas to solve the different question in the examination. Okay. I hope you got the answer. Okay. So without wasting much time, I'm continuing today's video. So let us look at the first question from the Zen paper 3 from the biology part. So when we look at the first question in the given figure of a cotyledon, the parts labeled A and B respectively are See, if you observe this particular picture, dear students, if you observe this picture, it is given in how do organisms reproduce lesson. Okay. But in the textbook, they have given it as, you know, this is a future shoot, which is called as plumule. And this is a future root, which is called as radical. But here, they have not mentioned an option called the future root and future shoot or plumule or radical then how can you identify the given option among the given options which is correct? Look at the four options. The first option, fruit and shoot. Definitely it is not a fruit. Okay, this is not a fruit. Okay, so option A is wrong. Primary shoot and primary root. Of course, this can be. Why? Because primary is nothing but something which is growing for the first, something which is happening for the first. So in this seed, the first thing which is being growing upwards is a shoot. So I can consider it as a primary shoot and the one which is growing towards the soil is the root and this is the one which is growing for the first one, first time. So I can consider it as a primary root. This is a primary shoot and this is a primary root. Okay. So let us check out the other two options as well. Other two options, secondary root, definitely not. Primary shoot root, uh, this uh, option B is not the primary shoot at all because it's a root part and option d is also not correct they are not bud and leaf okay so here the right answer is option b that is primary shoot and also the primary root so this is how you have to analyze the questions in the examination okay let us look at the next question so the next question is identify the right pair among the following see they have given many options here of the bird and forelimb of a horse are homologous organs so, are they homologous organs, wing of the bird and also forelimb of horse? See, they have some similar structure in their body. Their body design is something similar, but they perform different function. Of course, this is the right answer. Let us look at the other options as well. Wing of a bat and forelimb of a squirrel are analogous, they are saying. See, wing of a bat and forelimb of a squirrel, they do not have common function. Analogous organs perform common function. So option B is wrong. Wing of a bird and a wing of a butterfly, they are analogous because they perform same function. But, he, but here they have given homologous, so it is wrong. Moving to fourth C, fin of a fish and a wing of a bird. Fin of a fish and wing of a bird are not having the same function. So I cannot consider it as an analogous organ. So option D is also wrong. So the right answer here is the option A because they have the similar structure and but they perform the different functions. Okay, that is what the homologous organs is all about. Okay, so next question, one more question, let us focus. See, how is the function of axon different from the dendrites? Very important students, you have to know what is the difference between axon and a dendrite. See, dendrites are something which looks like this, right? These are called as dendrites. These dendrites receive the electrochemical you know the impulses from the neurons and these dendrites they carry these electro imp electrochemical impulses to
towards towards the cell body okay whereas the axon which is present at this region this region is axon okay so this axon it carries the impulses away from the cell body dendrites carry towards but axon carry away that is what the difference you have to find out between the axon and also the dendrite okay so moving to fourth question what are biodegradable substances a very easy question and a very you know the expected question from our environment biodegradable and non biodegradable both are important the substances which can be easily mixed with the soil which can be easily decomposable they are considered to be biodegradable okay so let us now look at the two marks questions differentiate between the homologous and analogous organs this is an expected question actually because most of the times they ask about the homologous organs and analogous organs or the examples for them so that has been asked usually in the examination homologous organs are the organs which have the similar origin and their basic structure remains same but the functions are different what about analogous it is completely opposite to homologous analogous organs have the different basic structure but they perform the same function homologous function is different but in analogous the function is same okay so moving to next two mark question what changes can you make in your habits to become more environment friendly very important see what you have to do to reduce the environmental pollution or how can you be the environment friendly reduce burning the plastics okay you can reduce usage of plastics use the local transport system like buses cars and not the cars buses and trains for the you know the distance where you can travel with the help of bus and train and do not cut the trees for the human needs so all these are some of the examples that make you an environmental friendly okay these are the habits that are helping the humans to become more environmental friendly seventh question why are sense organs called receptors see you know that receptors are present in all the sensory areas and the sense organs wherever the sense organs are there everywhere there is receptors these receptors they help in control and coordinating the entire system of an organism okay so which are the sense organs you all know that the sense organs are eyes ears nose tongue and skin correct so to control and coordination in the human beings okay the nervous system is present apart from nervous system the hormonal system is also present in the human beings to control and coordinate but when we talk about you know uh, the sensory organs these are the sensory organs as i told you eyes ears nose skin and tongue and these sensory organs they contain the receptors and these receptors they receive the information from the environment around us and they help us to react for the situation okay very important the question asked is why are sense organs called receptors because in all the sensory areas that is the receptors are present which helping you know collecting the information from the environment and sending into the body very important next question name some involuntary activities that takes place in our body which part of our nervous system control and coordinate these activities see name some involuntary actions involuntary actions is nothing but the actions which was not which are not under our control okay so for example the blood pressure salivation vomiting okay they are all not under our control and who will control all these activities these activities are will be controlled by the medulla which is present in the hind brain okay involuntary activities are the activities or the actions which are not under our control examples as i told you these are the examples and they are been controlled by the medulla which is present in the hind brain important draw a neat labeled diagram of the germination of pollen on stigma most of the students will confuse you have to draw this diagram and label the part which is been given in the examination if you don't know do not label the wrong part okay label all the parts of the particular diagram usually this will be asked for two marks next question explain the importance of fossils in deciding the evolutionary relationship very important concept and a question also importance of fossils in what in deciding the evolutionary relationship 
yes see the fossils provide us the knowledge about what about the plants and also animals which were lived 100 years ago and now which are not existed that means they are all extincted so these fossils they help us to compare the animals which are presently which are present now whatever the animals which you are seeing seeing on the land so we can compare uh, the fossils of the animals which are now present on the land and which are already extinct and we can compare the fossils of both the animals and they also provide the missing link between the study of evolution so missing link so for example see i was always giving an example of, of uh, a birds and reptiles reptiles and birds both were having the feathers both were having the feathers now the birds are having the feathers reptiles were having the feathers but you know the reptiles were having the feathers to protect their body from the cold but the birds are having the feathers to fly there is a some missing link because the evolution has been taken place between the reptiles and birds which help the birds to modify their feathers this is what we will call it as evolution okay yes very important topic see next these you know the fossils they help in providing the information while forming the sequence of organism in the pathway of evolution see we can compare for example if we uh, compare ourselves to chimpanzees and some other uh, you know animals which looks similar to us we can think that they all are our ancestors because we have some link between each other they help us in providing the information when when they are forming the sequence of organism we chimpanzees monkeys we are all in sequence of organisms so we can find out the pathway of evolution between each of us okay yes moving to next an expected question draw a neat label diagram of the human heart i have shown you i have taught you to write many times about these diagrams check out the link is given in the description box below next question describe the structure and the function of nephron yes very important question see this time there is a chance of asking about nephron it may be diagram or diagram related to question see when we talk about structure each nephron has the bowman's capsule you have seen this diagram right so this is called as bowman's capsule this has been again you know having a continuation so this is what we will call it as pct which you also call it as proximal convoluted tubule in your textbook it is given as tubular nephron okay so each nephron has the bowman's capsule a pct that is leading to the collecting duct that means whatever this convoluted tubule is there this will ultimately connect it to the collecting duct okay so these are some of the major parts next so bowman's capsule what does it do it receives the you know the blood from the afferent arteriole okay so for example see this is the bowman's capsule this bowman's capsule contain the blood capillaries in it we will call it as glomerulus so this bowman's capsule contain the blood capillaries these blood capillaries are called as glomerulus these glomerulus receives the blood from the afferent arteriole okay so we will call it as arteriole or we will call it as artery okay so the blood which enter to the afferent arteriole will get you know uh, the filtration or it get filtered the filtered blood now from the glomerulus enter to the next part that is the pct for the reabsorption okay so once the reabsorption is done what happen the reabsorbed uh, you know the important substances get back to the blood and the unwanted substances which we will call it as nitrogenous materials which get filtered okay will pass as urine it reaches to the you know collecting duct and then from the collecting duct it will reach to bladder it will stay in the bladder for certain period of time until the pressure is created and once the pressure is created what happen it is been excreted out through urethra okay so this is the basic thing which i have already explained in the crash course dear students if you don't know about this concept please go through the crash course of the lesson life process okay so if you go through the lesson uh, called life process it will be very easy for you to understand this particular concept so moving to next question draw a neat labeled diagram to show the structure of neuron very important question okay it will be asked for two marks okay learn this diagram and also learn the parts of it next explain the transmission of the nerve impulse in the body so again 
they are asking the transmission of the nerve impulse in the body see the nerve impulse will always travel from the dendrite for example see if you look at this structure this structure what happened the nerve impulses which has been received which will all it, it is always going to first reach the dendrite correct now so from the dendrite what happened it will goes to cell body to this part from the cell body it reaches the axon from the axon it will go to nerve ending and between one neuron to another neuron there is a small gap we will call it as a synapse the gap between the two neurons we will call it as synapse s y n a p s e synapse okay there are millions of neurons in your body gap between one neuron to another neuron we will call it as synapse so the nerve impulses always travel from dendrites to the cell body and from the cell body it will go to axon and from the axon it will go to nerve ending okay the nerve impulse always sets off and releases as chemicals when it sets off or where it releases the chemicals see it releases the chemicals between one neuron to another neuron there is a small gap right so between one gap and another gap what happen so the synapse which was carrying an electrical impulse will turn off or it will set off and it releases the chemicals so from this gap again by the time it reaches to the next dendrite from the dendrite again it will move as a electrical electrochemical impulse itself moving to next question for the following glands write the hormones secreted by them and functions of the hormones see it's a very important all the plant hormones and animal hormones you must learn adrenal gland releases the adrenaline hormone and it is released during the stress when you are in stress when you when, when you are in fear okay what happen this adrenal gland releases the adrenaline hormone it increases your heart beat rate it increases your blood pressure and also it increases the breathing rate okay next moving to pancreas pancreas release a insulin hormone okay so insulin regulates the blood sugar level very important next pituitary gland pituitary gland is releasing the growth hormone it helps in growth and development of the body if it is released in more amount the condition we will call it as gigantism if it is released in the less amount we will call it as the condition we will call it as dwarfism so next they have asked thyroid gland releases the thyroxine hormone this thyroxine hormone help in metabolism of proteins fats and also the carbohydrates okay very important so now we are done with the biology part let me start with the chemistry part so when we look at the chemistry part the molecular formula of the hydrocarbon alkyne having a four hydrogen atom see most of you will make mistakes here students they have given four hydrogen atoms not the carbon so do not substitute n is equals to 4 okay so there should be four hydrogen atoms in the alkyne so the first member of alkyne is ethyne the formula is c2h2 okay take general formula and substitute cnh2n minus 2 the propyne is c3h4 okay because prop is c3 when we multiply it becomes 2 3s are 6 minus 2 so it becomes c3h4 so they have asked about four hydrogen atoms so alkyne which is having four hydrogen atom is propyne so here the right answer is option a c3h4 because they have asked about the four hydrogen atoms propyne is having the four hydrogen atom the next question is which of the following properties of the metal help in using them for preparing the strings and guitars dear students see when i talk about strings they have the thin wire like structures and you know the strings are used in the guitar to produce the sound so you must know the properties of the metals okay so the option a here is conductivity b is malleability c is sonorous and ductility b d is resistivity and also high melting point when we look at all the four options option a does not match with guitar option b is nothing but uh, metals can be beaten into thin sheet and sheets are not used in the guitar sonorous that means sound producing property and uh, the metal which is been used in the you know guitar is having uh, the ductility nature because they are found in the wire okay they are found in the wire form so ductility and sonorous both are correct answer option d is also not matching with this particular question okay so moving to next question what are metalloids this particular question is from the metals and non metals they can ask or they can also take it from the periodic classification of elements because in periodic classification of elements you have learned about what are metals what are non metals where are they what are uh, where are the non metal uh, that is metalloids about these things you have learned 
So when I talk about metalloids, okay, see the elements which exhibit both the properties of metals and non-metals, they are called as metalloids. Metals, metalloids are uh, are neither metals nor non-metals. They exhibit both the properties. Okay, example silicon, arsenic, germanium, anything we can write. Okay, they're all metalloids. Okay. Moving to next, metallic nature of elements increases as we go down the group in the modern periodic table. Why? Yes, students, metallic nature of elements increases as we go down the group. You should know what is meant by metallic nature. First of all, metallic nature is nothing but tendency to lose electron. Tendency to lose electron, we'll call it as metallic nature. Okay, as you go from left to right, metallic nature decreases because, see, when we take, let us take an example of sodium. In sodium, outermost orbit, one electron will be there. When it comes to magnesium, outermost orbit, two electrons are there. Sodium, magnesium, aluminium, when we talk about outermost electron, that is outermost orbit, three electrons are there. So, number of electrons are increasing. So, when we go from left to right, what happens? Tendency to lose electron decreases as the number of electrons increases. But when we go from top to bottom, what happens? As the number of shells increases, okay. See, in the first period, one shell will be there. In second period, two shells and in third period, three shells will be there. So, in outermost orbit, what happened? Only one electron will be there in the first group. So, it is easy for the element to lose one electron. Okay. So, that is the reason from top to bottom, metallic nature increases. Left to, to right, it decreases. Okay. That is what I have mentioned here. As we go down the group, that is number of shells increases. So, metallic character, that means tendency to lose electron increases. So, the next question is, why does benzene burn in air with a sooty and smoky flame? Yes, students, you might have not come across this particular question, but it is very simple. See, benzene, what is meant by benzene? Benzene is an unsaturated hydrocarbon, okay? And all the unsaturated hydrocarbon, they burn to give the yellow color, smoky or sooty flame. Very simple answer, okay? Don't confuse that. How is this question possible to come in the examination? Because benzene only structure they have asked in your uh, lesson. But here, you know that benzene is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. When we burn benzene, what happens? It releases sooty and smoky flame as it is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. And you know, all the unsaturated hydrocarbon, they burn to give yellow color sooty flame only. Okay. So, very clear, benzene is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. That is why when it is burning, it gives yellow color, sooty or smoky flame. Moving to next question, write the balanced equations for the reactions between. See, they have given aluminum oxide and also the hydrochloric acid. See, whenever aluminum oxide Al2O3 react with hydrochloric acid, it forms aluminum chloride that is AlCl3 and also there is formation of water. And similarly, when aluminum burns in air, aluminum burns in the air whenever any element is burning in the air you have to mention it as oxygen it forms aluminum oxide very simple and easy question okay moving to next write the balanced chemical equation of the following copper combines with oxygen see whenever copper is combining with oxygen it forms copper oxide balance it already have taught you see very easy see usually we write com copper combines with oxygen to form copper oxide okay so it is not balanced. There are two atoms of oxygen in the reactant side. You have to make two in the product also. What will you do? You write two in front of this product. So two into Cu, it becomes two Cu. And two into O, it becomes two O. Okay. So oxygen is balanced, but copper has increased by its value in the product side. So you have to increase the number of copper atoms in the reactants also. Reactant side also. So write two in front of copper. So, you get two copper atoms in the reactants also. Very simple. Write the atoms, that is elements present in it and also write the number of atoms. I have already thought this in previous sessions. Many times I have thought. Next, state the modern periodic law. How it is different from the Mendeley's periodic table. Very important children. See, note down. They are asking about what is meant by modern periodic law. Modern periodic law states that the properties of the elements are the periodic functions of the atomic number. How it is different from Mendeley periodic table? See, the Mendeley periodic table was completely based on the atomic mass. Okay. Whereas the modern periodic table is based on atomic number. Very simple. Okay. Yes, it was based on atomic mass. But modern periodic table is based on atomic number. Moving to next three marks question. Name the reddish brown fumes liberated when a lead nitrate is heated in the air. 
frequently asked question it is and also write the balanced chemical equation so when we heat the lead nitrate we get nitrogen dioxide which is reddish brown in color this is the reddish brown gas released when lead nitrate is heated and i have also written here the balanced chemical equation so this is an example for decomposition reaction yes moving to next question draw the neat labeled diagram of the apparatus used to test the conductivity of salt solution so this is a one diagram which you have to write very important children don't neglect it so moving to next question draw the diagram of the apparatus used to study the effects of steam on metals label any one part steam in the sense you have to write action of steam on the metal diagram so here i have labeled a metal piece you can label any part moving to next four marks question write the four properties of ionic compounds very important and expected question in this year exam so ionic compounds means everybody i told you to remember salt okay see ionic compounds are hard salt is hard it is brittle okay and ionic compounds are soluble in water take an example salt when you drop in water it is soluble but it is insoluble in petrol diesel and kerosene similarly ionic compounds have high melting point and high boiling point okay and ionic compounds have strong electrostatic force of attraction between the molecules very important okay yes so an expected question and moving to last see this time also there is more chance of asking the five mark question from the chemistry only because you have the structures from the lesson carbon and its compounds so firstly they have asked about cyclohexane so hexane is nothing but hex is nothing but six ane is nothing but the single bond between carbon and carbon atom so here we have to write six carbon atoms in the cyclic structure that means closed structure so six carbon atoms is written in this way okay when we write six carbon atoms each carbon atom should be surrounded by four bonds so these are completing with the two bonds left over with the two bonds so we are continuing the two bonds for hydrogen so the formula will be c6h12 not c6h6 it is c6h12 okay so please make a change here it is c6h12 cyclohexane so moving to next butane butane is they are asking about the branched structure of the butane here branched structure is nothing but the isobutane so you are going to write three carbon in straight chain and one in the branched chain so formula for this is c4h10 that is isobutane okay c4h10 butane is also c4h10 only moving to next ethanol all write two carbon atoms attach the alcohol group and remaining places you can you have to surround it by hydrogen the formula is c2h5oh propyne prop is nothing but three carbon ine is nothing but alkyne so there will be three carbon atoms in between any two carbon atom which you must write triple bond so as i have written here so this carbon have already three bonds left with one so we are attaching with the opposite carbon this carbon is already having three bonds so left with one i am attaching with the hydrogen okay so this side this carbon is having only one here remaining side you have to attach it by hydrogen the formula for the propyne is c3h4 already have told about this so this is all about the zen paper 3 my dear students i hope you found this video useful i hope you found this video useful dear students if you find this video don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel it's all meet in the next video until then take care all the best for your examinations